Go! Do you remember when we went to our first father-daughter dance? I do. I was in first grade, mom did my hair, and you gave me a corsage. When we danced, my head barely reached your stomach, and you would spin me out in great twirls, messing up the hair mom had worked so hard on. But now? Now I'm too old to go to father-daughter dances, and in a few years, my little sister will have her first dance. They don't have father-daughter dances in college. If there are any dads in the audience, I would like to invite you now to come and dance with your daughter. I think what I'll miss most about our dances is knowing that you'll be there to catch me when I spin out of control. Because now I have to pick myself up, <laughs> learn new footwork, make mistakes. I'll miss most the smell of your cologne when you draped your jacket around my shoulders when I face the bitter winds of the world. What I'll miss most about our father-daughter dances is you. I will miss your comforting words of wisdom. I will miss our therapeutic dinner dates. I will miss our tickle time. I will miss our long talks in the car. I'll miss looking up for my dinner plate to see random food stuck to your face. <laughs> I'll miss our History Channel and Nine News Marathon. I will miss our classic movie night. I'll miss the endless stories from when you were young and rebellious. They don't have father-daughter dances in college, so thank you for teaching me how to dance. different paths bonded together by one sentence that captures the essence of us. Birds of the same feather flock together, connected by brotherhood where we could be in each other's lives, supporting each other, respecting each other as people, personalities, our ideals, and artists, loving one another. <laughs> Uh, 
Hello, this is the director's commentary for Brotherhood. Uh, go. Yeah. Uh, so this was a serious piece written by Adam Chrisman. It was very serious. Um, it was about him and his brother. His brother. Yep. And, um, you know, it, it really talks about how he and his brother have a really special connection. Very special. Uh, specifically because they were birthed out of the same mother. Very, very um, same. Uh, you have anything to add? Anything? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important um, how he discusses they respect each other's personalities, ideals, and artistic... Um, uh, hearts. Yes. Heart. Thoughts, Heart. hearts, Heart. brains. Brain. Another. Feet. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's hey! really you're making memories. What do you mean? Like, in five or ten or forty years, do you think you're going to be able to look back and have lots of good memories? Like, if your life was a big photo album, when you're old and tired, do you think you'd just be able to open up your big life photo album and flip back to the year, the year that you were 17? And in that year, do you think that you would see, like, a magnitude of photos? Like, so many photos that they are falling out of the book? Well, I might find a lot of photos of brushing my teeth, or driving a car, or sitting in a chair, so if that counts, then yeah. That's what I mean. I want these times to be special or fun. The good old days, I guess. When I'm old and can't do much anymore, I don't want to look at my youth as time spent on teeth cleanliness. I want to have a bunch of fun and, and monumental moments. That way, when I look back, I can be okay with where I am, because because I know I've lived a good life. Don't you want to be satisfied knowing you lived a good life? Yeah, yeah, I do. Me too. Choreographer for the show. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, 
the show really, this piece really explains kind of what it's like to be a male. And as females, we've really been exploring this year how it is to be a man. Yeah. Um, so this piece really speaks to that, of having a hairy back. And us girls don't really know, well, except for Tess. Tess, you know how that feels like. Well, I experienced the same thing a while ago. I just had a hairy chest like Ethan. Um, I know how this feels. It's. Uh, it's, it's hard. hard. It's, it's hard. hard. Just yeah. look at look at this image really quick. Pause. Can we just uh, pause um, here and take a moment to uh, look at all the different reactions we have from all the boys here? Yeah. And actually, Ethan grew this hair for a couple months and um, really wanted to be as full as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Play. Play. Keep going. No. Mm. Just see, see the rejection. The rejection yeah. that they give him because of his back hair. And there's a lot of there's a lot of issues right now um, with werewolves in pop culture, and Ethan really studied werewolves because he wanted to get the sense of what it's like to be a hairy and man. We, and here we really have you know like the vampire werewolf combination with the Kai as the vampire, horrified. And at notice the this change, this change. You see him. See he's the inner monologue. It. It's really beautiful to watch his expression when he decides that he's going to make the best out of this situation. I mean, I mean, we just, he personally picked this pool himself because we wanted it to really be, you know, a statement when he jumped in that pool and it had to be his choice. It had to be powerful. It had to be powerful. So personal, it's universal. Yeah. <laughs> Let's fast forward a little bit. Watch this. Oh, oh, beautiful. Watch this ten. That was choreographed by me. We actually got Olympic swimmers to do jumps into the pools for us so we could study how they did it. <laughs> Curtain. Sorry, we don't have Coke. Is Pepsi okay? I don't know. Is Monopoly money okay? There's a difference. <laughs> Super short horror story. <laughs> President Santorum. <laughs> Mom, I got grass growing in the infield. <laughs> Cut! 
Getting naked, go. Hey, hey man, you ready for this? Yeah, absolutely. I hope you are. All right. Getting naked, 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 getting naked
See, while Elon was being abused by his father since age six, I was there to watch. Moved to California with his mom. And I didn't hear from him again until. Four years later, I called Michael up and I started with E. M. M. E. He said, what's up, nigga? And I said, don't call me that. And he said, I know. Look, I, I just called you because I wanted to let you know that he's a gang now. He's part of a gang. And I told him to stop. And he said, you, you don't, don't know, know my life, life man. But I do know Elon. He hung up the phone before I could tell him, I love you, man. E. M. M. E. Me. Kurt. Back your mouth, go. You all need to check the website. I'm not just talking bullcrap here and blowing smoke up your butt. I mean, JC, this is such angsty behavior. This is quasi ridiculous people. Why are you so angsty? I mean, what the fuck? Oh my hair? You made my hair go. It's so poopy, people. Got dirty now. Clean it up with oil. Becker approved. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Ready? Is that right? Yep. Jesus Christ, you're doing it wrong. Go. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. To all those standing on the corner with Bibles in their hands, yelling, Repent, repent, the end is nigh. You are doing it wrong. To every church, mosque, synagogue, or chapel, denying people entrance because they simply don't fit your criteria, you're doing it wrong. To religion, you are doing it wrong. I don't know if there's a God. I'm not sure I ever will know. But I do know one thing. If there was slash is a God, he slash she would be kind. He slash she would be merciful, gentle, and supportive. They would not damn you to hell, hölle, flingvond, mordor, or Texas. Simply because you love someone of the same sex. They would not condemn you because you have a slightly different belief in how the world works. We have free choice for a reason. So, to all those self-proclaimed saints, all those Bible thumpers, God would surely say, you are doing it wrong. But, to all those living each day as if it was the last, giving nothing but love, God would surely say, you're doing it right. Hey there, folks. I hope you're enjoying your time tonight. I just thought I'd let you know we're experiencing some technical difficulties with our sound system, but feel free to keep on dancing. Thank you. It's amazing how much the human mind is affected by the nighttime. When you're up late, watching the latest episode of a high-budget HBO drama, you turn off the TV and are surrounded by this pregnant pause. As you sit, observing the silence, you realize how late it is, how dark it is, and that you're probably the only one left awake in the house, or maybe even the entire block. You sigh, realizing how uneasy that last thought made you, and get up from the couch. You make your way to the kitchen very slowly, maybe checking behind you a few times. You know nothing will be there, but it makes you feel better nonetheless. After getting your drink of water, you head off to your room, turning off lights as you go. 
But then a thought bubbles up in your mind. Maybe something like, check behind you, or slender man. Or maybe something moves very slightly directly in front of you. You try to ignore these invaders, but that's impossible because whether you like it or not, you're at full alert. You soak up and overanalyze every sound, shadow, and feeling. You quicken your pace and check behind you. Finally, you get to the stairs. You turn off the last downstairs light and flee from the darkness. As you're going up the stairs, you feel a creepy, untangible force chasing you up the stairs. You panic and you quicken your pace constantly, constantly. Finally, you get to the top of the stairs, check behind you, nothing is there. You sigh and realize, well, I look like a fool. <laughs> Shaken, you see a room down the hall. You start off very calmly. Then, a crack or a pump. Everything from there on out is a blur. You sprint towards your door and fling it open. You are blinded by the explosion of light flooding into the hall from your room. Just as you're about to go into your room, you see something at the end of the hallway. Something there, a figure, a dark figure. Not concrete, but there. You move back into your room without even realizing what you just saw, and then it hits you. What the hell was that? <laughs> you go back out into the hallway and look at the spot where you saw whatever you saw. Nothing. Nothing is there except for maybe a pile of laundry. You go back into your room, sigh a breath of relief. Maybe it was an optical illusion. Or the way the light hit the wall. But it doesn't matter now. You're safe. Curtain. Lost in translation, go. So, I, I was doing it right, and usually it comes out really smooth and like controlled, but this time it, it came out really choppy and disconnected, like hard, and I couldn't get it out, and like I, I really pushed, trust me, like I, it took me a long time to get it out. Usually it's just, like it just, pops out of me. Like, I don't even have to try, hardly. And I, you know, I usually do it sitting down, but I had this urge to stand up this time. I don't know why. Man, you know, me too. Like, I took this huge dump the other day, and I usually sit down, but this time I stood up, and oh, man, it, like, went all down my leg. It was on the floor. It was everywhere. It just, like, came out, and the shape was, like, really cool, too. Like, oh, my God, it was awesome. <laughs> We were talking about running a monologue. <laughs> Curtain! Okay, the end to a new beginning, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. a new beginning, though our trip in New York came to a close. It was a new look on life. All of my classmates gave me something, whether it was mentally, physically, or emotionally. One, Annie Barber. Let me know the strength I had inside. Two, <laughs> Marlo Berberian. Let me know that friendship and love are key. Three, Michael Bohr. Reevaluated my love for theater. Four, Adam Christman. Reminds me of laughter in that warm, fuzzy feeling. Five, Carson Cramp. Gave me an honest opinion. Six, Lauren Donahue. Let me know it's okay to cry. Seven, Jake Everhart. Knighted me into his magical playland. Eight, Ethan Griggs. Confided in me and let me do the same. Nine, Michael Zay. Hugged me at the right time. Ten, Ryan Maltz. Let me know it's okay to laugh it all off. Eleven, Michael McCree. Made me remember what I forgot. 12, Madison Nichols. Let me know that being true to yourself is key. 13, Gage Norris. Gave me a piece of myself. 14, Desiree Sandler. Made me feel comfortable. 15, Nikki Seafree. Pulled out the attitude and worked it. 16, Avery Shiner. Showed me what true beauty is. 18, Tess Westenheimer. Gave me a combination of calm and crazy. 17, Jalen Taylor. A combination of crazy, unexplainable ideas, thoughts, and love. I have gotten more than I can handle, but it is only making me stronger.
Are we ready? Yeah. Shh. Theater majors don't say go. OMG, I totally read all the Shakespeare plays. Does anyone have any whites? <laughs> Not like the trapeze in Hamlet. OMG, we're so good at dancing. So I was at the gym yesterday. <laughs> No, 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 I'm Republican. <laughs> $300 donation in? <laughs> no, I'm totally straight. <laughs> what? No, I've never seen the majority of my class naked. <laughs> I think Miss Hand likes you more than Eli. <laughs> I know, I have all my monologues picked out. We are not competitive. So, Grit only took like one minute today. <laughs> Mr. Becker Curse is like a sailor. Okay. <laughs> hey, put it back together again, go! They told me I could fix it. <laughs> and it would be my job to put it back together again. That I was the future, and that it would be mine one day. But how can I fix something that's already broken beyond repair? How can this be my job if I don't feel like it's mine yet? How can this be my job if I don't even know what it is anymore? Who said the free? Not me. Surely not me. What about the thousands that die when we go on strike? Or the millions who have nothing to show for our pain? For all the dreams we've dreamed, for all the songs we've sung, and for all the hopes we've held, and all the flags we've hung. The millions who have nothing for our pain, except the dream that's almost dead today. Oh yes, I say it plain, America never was America to me.
your mom? Uh, my mom? That she flies out to Australia every week to meet executives for CBS? <laughs> Australia? Who told you that? Oh, Frank did. Frank, uh, are you sure you meant me and not somebody else? No, I'm positive. It's you. Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> Wait, why? Is it not you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no? No. Well, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, what does your mom do anyways? Well, she died two years ago, so... <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Curtain! <laughs> Ladies, do you know that one in every four women is a man? <gasps> oh dear! <laughs> Thankfully, I am here to offer you the latest state-of-the-art man-detecting technology. <sighs> beep beep. Well, it looks like it works. <laughs> beep 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 beep. Oh! Looks like. <laughs> One in every four women is a man. Are you? Call 1 800 Am I a Man? 1 800 Am I a Man? Curtain. Knock knock. Hey. Hey. Ready? Pretty damn acceptable. Go. Okay, man, you gotta go up to her. And then you gotta look her in the eyes. Eye contact is very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you gotta take your hand and brush her. Against yeah. her shoulder or hair or yeah, sure. something. I don't know what they do. And um and then you gotta tell her she looks pretty. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. then you'll oh, be yeah. damn acceptable in my book. Yeah, yeah, okay. Alright. <laughs> you look pretty damn acceptable. <gasps> Acceptable go. Um, so, as you can see, Adam's trying to pump up Jake to ask out Lauren. And, um, you know, I think originally this was actually me playing Adam's part, but I think Adam does a better job. He's, he's a little more quirky, and you wouldn't expect him to actually, you know, ask out any girl. So I think it's a little ironic. Absolutely. His, um, his advice to Jake is really interesting because if any man ever asked me like that, I would um, slap them as Lauren does later in the scene. As you see, if we go in slow motion here, you can see what's about to happen. This is oh, exactly oh, what I'm Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're in it. Oh. Confidence. Do you see how he touches her? That's beautiful. That's, that's really something else. You know, I think I would say yes. I would. I would, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I just want Jake to touch me like that. The satanic. Oh my gosh. Did you see her that? That is dramatic. That was so realistic. Adam realistic. doesn't understand the problem. Like, look at how fast she runs away. Got it. The lunge towards her. him is so really cute. Beautiful. Oh, 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 do you see how she touches him? <laughs> now that's some beauty right there. That's it's a beautiful beauty. parallel to the way that he treated Lauren. Oh um, because many people would probably do it very differently, but she yes. actually does a really good job of imitating yes. it pretty accurately. Oh it's, it's, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. That's what it is. Yes. Oh. You know, I think everybody should ask each other. True romance. Oh. <laughs> You know, that would be my dream oh, way Jake's to ask out a girl to prom. Oh, yes, with your tongue sticking out. Adam, oh, he's confused. He's confused. He's confused. Uh, curtain? Yes, so. <laughs> I go to church on weekdays, go. Somebody once told me that because I am an atheist, because I do not believe in God, I must not believe in anything. Somebody once told me that because I'm an atheist, I must have no soul, no passion, no underlying meaning to the life that I'm living. Somebody once told me that because I'm an atheist, I must be incapable of love and will never understand the true meaning of community. Somebody once told me that because I'm an atheist, I must not have a religion. 
religion, a congregation of people with shared devotion to a collection of belief systems and practices. Most have organized behaviors such as regular services that often occur at a holy place such as a temple, a mosque, or a church. My congregation is my student community, the theater class of 2013. Our shared devotion is to a belief system of kindness, creativity, and compassion. Our practice is art. The service we attend every Monday through Friday, 105 to 235 p.m. is called theater class. The stage is our church, our temple, our mosque. It is our holy place. I am an atheist and I go to church on weekdays. Hey! Hey! What's up? There's only 18. Book six, chapter 25. This messes with my head. I'm not talking. <laughs> Book six, chapter 25 is the seer overheard. <laughs> Book two, chapter four is at Flourish and Blots. Wow. <laughs> See that little girl? Mm -hmm. You knew I was coming for her. You knew it. She knew it. Look at that. Yes. We can still see you. Now, girl, mm -mm. get it together. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Becker? She's lovely. She is. I really like her. Yes. She's, she's I think nice. I like you more than Mr. Becker himself. <laughs> it's possible. Yes, it's yeah. possible. <laughs> Eli, hey there. Why is he here? Why? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's okay, I love you. Alright, okay. Moving on. <laughs> that cough? Unnecessary. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. You're making noise you during be. our play. You shouldn't be doing that. That was That's not, not written okay. in the script. That, I don't remember that being written. No. Yeah. Moving on. Thank you for coughing. <laughs> Are you the kitten who went to the zoo? <laughs> Is that a bandana? <laughs> That's ratchet. Mm. It's like he's trying to be a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> and a gangster at the same time. It's all in one. But he's wearing Adidas. Yeah. <laughs> Sandals. And this kid's wearing a hat. Oh. 
Why do I we have like a problem every with single every single show. show? Someone's wearing a hat. <laughs> take it. Take the hat off, please. You should write it on a sign outside that says "No hats." To drink. No hats. <laughs> <laughs> this is a place of worship. Uncover your hat. You're doing it wrong. Thank you. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Hand would surely say you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Alessandra. Oh, I see her. Oh, she's trying to cover. The Someone yeah. did this last night yeah. too. You can't hold in your laugh. This, it's not like you're pushing. It, it comes out. Yeah. She's still trying. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a weird laugh right there. <laughs> <laughs> Like that. Cut like this. <laughs> <laughs> 